chapter 32, The View from the Oak. Rondouin had dressed in the early morning darkness, and now he stood at his bedroom window wearing his special linen shirt. He waited for the sun to brighten the sky and light up the water that still stretched from the castle to the forest. Mirabel stepped out the door into the early morning darkness and waited at the base of the tall oak. She waited until the first rays of sun lit the upper branches and then she began to climb. Now, Rondouin watched as the water brightened. He blinked three times when he saw it. A patch of earth, the highest point on the little hill at the center of the fields had appeared. Oh no, he said aloud. He ran out the door, leaving the bucket and the jug behind. I'll feed the chickens later, he thought. First, I'll check the water level at the steps before I tell mother and father. Looking out through the branches at the top of the tall oak, Mirabel knew right away that the water had gone down. Halfway between the forest and the castle, a small hilltop had appeared like a little island. Mirabel scrambled down the tree and ran around the house. She was normally a calm child, but now, when she saw what had happened overnight, she called out in her loudest voice, Wake up, everyone! Come outside! Within minutes, Sir Andrew, her mother, her father, Rowan, Garrick, Adelaide, carrying Elspeth, the baker, the twins, and their mother, all ran outside, and along with Mirabel, looked in astonishment at the green boat, which no longer floated, but sat in mud. We have to move fast, said Sir Andrew. The water is dropping so quickly that we need to get the boat to the lake before the path is above water. Yesterday, we thought I could bring the Baker family to town and then come back to light the fire and pick up Ricard and Rowan. But now we need a faster plan. Rowan and I will get ready to go with you now, said Ricard. Once the boat gets to the lake, we will have enough water even if the flood goes away entirely. We can travel over the lake and then up the river to the village. We can wait in the village to give Roland time to light his signal fire, to tell us he's on his way. If we can get to the village this morning, we can tell the field workers to be ready by tomorrow morning. If we see a fire from the barn hill, we will take Lars. He's strong and knows a lot about planting, but he's not a fast runner. So if we don't see a fire, we will take one or two runners to run to Roland to give him aid. Sir Andrew, you and Ricard and Rowan can stay overnight with us, said the baker. Rondouin made his way around the third floor scaffolding and into the stairwell. Even on the third floor landing, he could tell from the changed sound of the echo of his steps that something had changed on the first floor. He hurried down the steps and, reaching a view of the first floor, he was startled to see that the boards, once a dock for the green boat, sat far above the level of the water. Looking down the steps, he could see that the jug that still sat on the step, marking the highest water level, now it was many steps above the water level. I must tell mother and father that the water is going down fast, really fast, thought Rondouin, turning and hurrying up the stairs. Sir Andrew turned to Rowan and Garrick. I think the two of you are big enough to push the boat off the mud, he said. I'm big enough to help too, said Mirabel, and I'm lighter, so I won't sink so far into the mud. Mirabel looked out at the boat, sitting on mucky mud. She wanted to get to the back of the boat, but did not want to walk through the muck. It sat near the fence, so she climbed up onto the fence. Then she walked on its lower rungs while holding the top of the fence until she neared the stern of the boat. When she got near the stern of the boat, Mirabel climbed to the top of the fence and jumped into the boat. She realized that now she had no choice 
but to step into the mud. It felt cold and sticky and oozed between her toes as she took a couple of steps to the stern of the boat. Now she took a hold of the boat and began pulling it into the water. At the same time, Garrick and Rowan pushed on the bow. Bit by bit, they tugged and pushed the green boat until it floated. Mirabelle climbed back into the boat and tied it to a tree so it wouldn't float away. While Mirabelle returned by scooting her way along the fence, she noticed the adults deep in conversation. She had missed most of their discussion, but now she heard her mother say, we will be fine here on our own. I can chop wood and haul water. But I'm supposed to chop the wood while Rowan is away, said Mirabelle, just before jumping off of the fence. Mirabelle, we were talking about how you can run as fast as Rowan, said her father. And I'm not sure we will find a child as fast as you in the village, said Sir Andrew. Rondwin is as fast, said Mirabelle. But the farm where he lives is further down the path, away from the village, and you wouldn't have time to fetch him. Mirabelle noticed that her father and Sir Andrew smiled at each other, but she did not know why they smiled. Sir Andrew said, yes, that farm is farther than we dare travel today. So, said Mirabelle's father, we want you to come with us as far as the village. If we see a signal fire from Roland, you can stay at the village and help in the bakery until the land is dry enough to walk home. But if we don't see a signal, this means Roland needs help. Then you will go with us to the foothills tomorrow morning, and you and Rowan will take the place of Lars in the boat. When we get to the foothills, two of you will run all the way to the barn hill to help Roland. Mirabelle's eyes grew wide. She had not expected this new responsibility but she felt ready to do what was asked of her. I can be ready to go very quickly, she said. Come inside, said her mother. Let's pack up some food and I'll lend you my warm shawl. Rondwin burst into the new kitchen. Father, mother, cook Agnes. The water has gone down really far. I see an island in the field and many more dry steps on the first floor. It will be today, I know it. They will have to move the boat into town before the water is too low and move it at all. I must go to the sitting room and watch for the signal fire. Oh, except I have not fed the chickens. I will go with you to the sitting room, said his father, getting up from the table. I must see this island myself. You have not eaten anything, said Cook Agnes to Rondwin. I will bring you bread and cheese to you in the sitting room, and I will feed the chickens. And I will prepare a pot of glowing embers for lighting our signal fire, said the queen. When Rondwin's mother, the queen, was preparing a pot of glowing embers for their signal fire, Mirabelle's mother was also placing embers into a pot. Mirabelle's mother carried her embers to the goat yard. Mirabelle followed her with one arm around a bag full of goat cheese and bread. It was the blue woolen bag that had come from the castle. The other arm clutched her mother's warm woolen shawl. And then it all happened very fast. Mirabelle's father held Elspeth and Adelaide in his arms. He was saying goodbye to them as Mirabelle's mother placed the embers under the pile and blew hard on them. The dry kindling lit in a flash. For a moment, Mirabelle saw small flames licking the wood. Then she heard crackling sounds and hissing sounds. Suddenly, the entire heap of wood burst into flames. Soon, the flames leaped upward and a plume of smoke reached to the sky above. Rowan ran around the house to climb the oak tree. Standing near the goat yard, Mirabelle looked out over the house and saw him climbing into the uppermost branches. Rondwin spotted the first wisps of smoke before his father did. I think that might be smoke, he said. I'm not sure, 
said his father. Maybe it is. It's certainly coming from the right place. We'll know in a moment. Rondouin was wearing his magical linen shirt. He clutched the hem of his shirt while he watched and waited. Then, suddenly, a great plume of smoke followed the wisp. That is surely the signal fire, said Rondouin. Let's go, said the king. Your mother said she would meet us on the turret. She should be there now with embers in a pot. Rondouin had learned how to move around the scaffolding with speed that was not as fast as running, but was fast nonetheless. Cook Agnes was leaving the chicken balcony as he passed. The fire is lit, he told her, and turned back to notice that his father was not keeping up with him. Speed on, son, called his father. Rondouin reached the top of the turret and, though he was out of breath, managed to say, The signal fire is lit. Rondouin's mother pointed to the pot of embers and handed him a small shovel. You may light the fire she said. Rondouin spotted the area where small twigs had been placed under larger twigs. This was the spot meant for the embers. He placed two shovels full of embers into the twigs. Now his father arrived, and the king handed Rondouin the bellows. With three big puffs of air, flames grew from the orange embers and lit the small twigs. Rondouin felt a gust of wind on his back and then the entire heap of wood burst into flames and smoke climbed into the sky. Look, it's Roland, said the queen, who saw the old farmer step out of the barn and stare in the direction of the castle. The castle fire is lit, called Rowan, high from his perch in the oak. A great cheer rose up from Sir Andrew and everyone standing around the little house joined him in happy shouting. Their signal fire had been seen at the castle, and the king and queen had sent the message along to Barnhill. As soon as Rowan came down from the oak tree, Sir Andrew turned the boat around. Then Mirabel and Rowan were sent to the bow of the boat. Behind them, Garrick, Ricard, the twins, and their mother and father filled the green boat. Sir Andrew gave the boat a big push as he stepped into the stern of the boat. The baker took up the oars. At first, Mirabelle's view was blocked by all the people in the boat, but then the path curved and, for a moment, she was able to see all the way back to their house in the forest. She could see Adelaide standing next to her mother, who was holding Elspeth, and she could see the fire burning brightly. Mirabelle waved, and her mother and Adelaide waved back. Chapter 33, Lullaby on the Lake. Cook Agnes joined Rondouin and his parents on the turret with a view to Barn Hill. The fire was so hot that they all stood as far from it as they could. Roland has gone back to the barn, said Rondouin to Cook Agnes. Maybe he plans to light his fire, but it looks like he's not going to light it right away. Sir Andrew told me that they would wait a full day to light the second fire as they leave town for the foothills, said Rondouin's father. As you know, they can see a signal fire from the barn hill but the pine forest prevents Roland from seeing any signal fires lit in the forest or the towns. Why wouldn't Roland leave now with all the animals since he knows that they will be in the foothills soon? Asked Rondouin. It could be that he's tending a sick animal, said Cook Agnes, or that he himself has a problem that would keep him from traveling. I know he sometimes has pain in his back said Rondouin's father. I know my brother well, said Cook Agnes. He loves his animals and he will be eager to get them to the new spring grass in the hills. Rondouin, 
It looks like we won't see a second fire from Sir Andrew until tomorrow. Perhaps you should stay in this turret and watch to see if Roland lights a signal fire. We would like to know if he is about to leave with the animals. Meanwhile, I'll go to the sitting room to keep an eye toward the town. We don't expect a signal until tomorrow, but I will watch just in case. I will watch with you, said the king. And I will bring meals to all of you, said Cook Agnes. The king and Cook Agnes left first, and the queen stayed behind to talk with Rondelin. You should go inside on the top floor of the turret to watch. Between the hot fire and the hot sun, you will be uncomfortable here. Rondwin nodded and followed his mother down the stairs to the area near the window where he had practiced juggling. Too bad I don't have any silk pieces to juggle with while I wait, said Rondwin. The queen reached into her pocket and pulled out a red square of silk and a blue square of silk. I think you are ready to try juggling with two squares now, she said, smiling. Rondouin's mother took a moment to show Rondouin how to juggle with two pieces of silk. Then she left him to practice. Mirabelle and Rowan sat in the bow of the green boat as it traveled down the forest path that led to the lake. When I went to the village last time, I saw only trees poking out of the water. Now there are bushes, and look, there's a big rock, said Mirabelle. As she said this, they felt a big bump as the boat hit the forest floor. They were stuck for a moment, but then the baker took an oar out of its oarlock and handed it to Sir Andrew, who used it to push the boat forward by poking it through the water and into the mud. Then the baker went back to rowing. This happened three times before the lake came into view. We will come to a big bump at the edge of the lake, said Mirabelle, who remembered standing near at that spot many times as she said goodbye to Rondwin and turned to run down the path toward home. If we get stuck, you and I can step out for a moment to make the boat lighter, said Rowan. Good idea, said Mirabelle, as they reached the bank of the lake and found the boat could not pass. The two children hopped out, stepped into the lake, and pulled hard on the boat, while Sir Andrew and the baker used both oars to push. The twins began to cry, and it was as if their sound loosened the boat, for just at the moment of their loudest wail, the boat was freed and slipped into the lake. Mirabelle and Rowan pointed the boat toward town and climbed back in. As soon as the craft began gliding over the lake, the twins stopped fussing, and as their mother sang a gentle lullaby, they fell asleep. Mirabelle found the sound of the oars splashing in and out of the water, the warmth of the sun on her face, and the gentle rocking motion of the boat to be soothing. She lay back against the bow and watched clouds moving slowly across the sky. During this quiet time, she began to think about the next day. She imagined seeing smoke from Barn Hill and knowing that this meant that Roland did not need her help. Instead, she would help at the bakery. Then she imagined coming to the end of the morning with no sign of smoke. If they saw no smoke, she and Rowan would travel up the river to the foothills. Then they would run, run fast with a view out over the valley to the barn hill and the castle, run along the high path toward the hill and then up the hill to the barn. Here, they would learn why Roland had not yet brought the animals to new grass. Mirabelle closed her eyes and when she opened them after a short sleep, she saw that they had entered the river. She sat up and yawned noticing the stone walls that lined the river bank. Turning, she saw they had almost reached the town with its tall buildings standing tightly together. 